This is the 27th Annual Dice Awards. And now welcome your hosts, Stella Chung and Greg Miller. Sit down! All right, all Sit right. down! Get settled! This whole side of the room down. Yeah, yeah, In the yeah. back, yeah. down. Hey, you hear those cheers for me and not you? It's pretty great, it's pretty great. Shut up, Stella. All right, all right. everybody down, everybody happy. Everyone out there listening so. ears? Just keep it to a dull roar, please. Yes, yes. Everyone There's no drinks. special video. There's no Ted Price to open this year. It's just us. All right, yeah. well, we need your full attention. Ooh. Thank you. There we and go. There. You thought it wouldn't yeah, work. So yeah. All right. Well, welcome to the 27th Annual Dice Awards. I'm Stella Chung. And I'm Greg Miller. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Ooh. Oh, we're actually already being told to wrap it up. Already being told to wrap it up. Sorry, everybody. That was a fast one this year. Yeah, well, as a reminder, winners tonight will not receive a trophy. Instead, they will receive a box for a trophy with a download code inside. Of course, yes. Physical media is dead. But before we start, we wanted to say something important that's been on everyone's minds. Congratulations to Baldur's Gate 3! No, no, no. Right? No, Thank no. you. No, that is Thank for the end you. of the show. Please stick around. Jesus. <sighs> All right. Well, in all seriousness, seriousness, we do have to take a second out to acknowledge that 2023 was a hard year for our industry. Despite so many great games that came out this past year, thousands upon thousands of talented, hardworking, incredible people have been laid off from their jobs. Yeah, and unfortunately, 2024 looks like it's going to be shaping up the same way. These are dedicated developers and writers and artists and musicians and testers and support staff and so many more. We pride ourselves on our industry being one of the biggest forms of entertainment in the world. If that's true, maybe it's also true that we can do better caring for our workers. Keep it going, yeah! <laughs> workers' rights, what's up, IGN <laughs> Union? Yeah, thank you. Anyways, I think we can all agree that the only person in the video game industry that shouldn't have a job is Bobby Kotick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what. Yeah. I've been doing this eight years, and there used to be a lot more groans. But now that the Wicked Witch is dead, all oh, the laughs are here, are they? Okay. It truly fuels okay. him. It sure. does fuel him. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, we debated even telling jokes with everything going on in the industry and the world. And it's really been a hard time for a lot of people. So, you know what, Greg? I think we should be serious. No, we came up with the plan. We'll still tell jokes. Yeah, you're right. They just won't be funny. So, you know, same show as always. Well, eight years running, right? Eight years running. Well, it was funny. We, it doesn't matter. Yeah, all right. Okay. God, that one didn't work at all. You want the shot? <laughs> yeah, let's uh, do it. Sorry, everybody. It's a little Raise early. your glass. Well, no, it's better to loosen up Ew, first. It's so warm. It's, it's warm from my ass heat. <laughs> Goodness. Okay. <laughs> That's good. I just hit the cocoon development team with a bottle, so I'm sorry. Congratulations so on your game and your nominations tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, we're adapting ourselves to industry standards, right? That's right. If a joke doesn't work, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to claim it's in early access. Yes, and then we're going to disappear off the stage and post an image with eight paragraphs of text. It's video game's hottest new trend, everybody. Yeah. Of course, a lot happened in the video game industry last year, both good and bad. Yes, here's how weird 2023 was, all right? Somehow the three biggest controversies were mass layoffs, Bad business decisions, and is Dave the Diver an indie game? <laughs> and people, and people online were mad about the last one the most. Yeah, seriously though, like, is this the hill you want to die on? Are you really upset that Dave the Diver got the indie nom? It's like we're taking on problems in the games industry from the bottom up. I, I hear you, Stella, but here's the thing I can't stop layoffs. I can't stop hackers. I can't stop business executives making terrible, terrible decisions, but I can stop people from thinking that pixel art means indie game. That is a lie. Yeah. Thank you, indie developers yeah. in the crowd. <laughs> also, I feel like indie games have kind of moved on their graphics to PlayStation 1 style graphics. That is correct. We see you, El Paso Elsewhere. We see you. Yeah. yeah. Of course, we're here about the games nominated tonight, so let's give them a huge round of applause. Of course, what I love about the games this year is the variety that they bring. I mean, just look at the nominees, okay? Lego 2K Drive, 
is nominated for Racing Game of the Year. Come on, right yeah, there, yeah. right? Diablo 4 is nominated for Role Playing Game of the Year. Come okay, on. Yeah, yeah, okay. And the day before is nominated for Best Game We All Knew Was a Scam. And then, yup, it turned out to be a scam of the year. Yes, of the year. So we mentioned that Baldur's Gate 3 is Hold on a second. Some tomatoes are getting ready on that last one. I apologize for that. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so we mentioned that Baldur's Gate 3 is up for some major awards tonight, and let me tell you, that game is crazy. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, we thought Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom had it in the bag, and then Baldur's Gate 3 showed up, like the cool kid, and was like, am I too late to audition? Yeah, of course, right? Not only is Baldur's Gate 3 a good game, it's the first game ever to make me go, don't come in here! Don't come in here! I'm, I'm, I'm doing my taxes, don't come in here! Which is weird because I'm so proud of the different things I've done in there. And I mean, Baldur's Gate 3's romance options were so crazy that you could even make love to a bear. That's true. I just yeah. wish Larian had told me that's why I was in the mocap suit. <laughs> but don't worry, everybody, this bear's taken. How you doing, honey? <laughs> I want to point out that was specifically made for him. I should hope so. <laughs> oh, and of course, ladies and gentlemen, Final Fantasy 16 is nominated for two awards tonight. If you're not familiar, Final Fantasy 16 carried on the proud tradition of Final Fantasy fans complaining about Final Fantasy. Yeah, you know, some people were worried that Final Fantasy 16 wasn't enough like the regular series to be a real Final Fantasy game. Then they saw it was about a sad boy with great hair fighting God, and they were like, yeah, no, we're good. I nailed it. Yeah, that's a, that's a Final Fantasy game. Uh, there was even controversy, of course, over whether Final Fantasy 16 was a role-playing game with action elements or an action game with role-playing elements. But I have the definitive answer. It doesn't fucking matter. Enjoy yeah. the game. Right? Thank you. Yeah, it's a game with a magic dog. What else do you need? Exactly, exactly. Except the truth. Well, hey, Marvel Spider-Man 2 is up for nine awards tonight. Nine! Yeah! Or, you know, as Sony fans online would put it, not enough! Not enough! Listen, listen, some people just really love to press the same buttons over and over rather than strategize with turn-based games. Okay, Craig. okay. Your PC bias is showing with your Baldur's Gate, but don't worry about it. I'm just saying this. If Insomniac wins all nine awards for Spider-Man, they're gonna be spraying their webs everywhere. <laughs> this half got it. That was a cum joke. <laughs> it was that they would enjoy it so much they would Please. orgasm. Everywhere. Yeah, okay, can we play them off, please? <laughs> That'd be amazing. Well, hey, you know another game that came out this year? Starfield. Moving on. No. <laughs> We're just kidding. We're just kidding. I genuinely love Starfield, everybody. I said it was my <laughs> game of the year. Thank you, other Starfield fans. There are dozens of us. I just wish I could tell the developers that in person, but sadly Bethesda got lost on their way here because we wouldn't give them a map. But, there we go. Because you see, <laughs> Shuhei, the problem was they didn't have a map in the game. They had it with me, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry, Greg, it's coming in a later update. Oh, great, yeah. another, oh, updates, I yeah, love those. Okay. And let's give it up for Cocoon, all right, everybody? <laughs> An amazing game that came out of nowhere. Yeah, you chucked your alcohol at them. I did chuck my what alcohol. What a great way to yeah, respect yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. And it's actually really cool. It's the first Game of the Year nominee tonight that's not a sequel. So watch your back, Baldur's Gate 3. They might untitled Goose Game your ass. <laughs> <laughs> now again, okay. I've been hosting for eight years, so the joke there was that in 2020, untitled Goose Game won Game of the Year. Oh, the internet was pissed. They didn't understand it. Thank you. <laughs> you good? Yeah, well, you right. gotta explain them sometimes. They're not that bright. <laughs> All right. Well, Nintendo is nominated for a bunch of awards tonight, too. That's right, and of course, round of applause for yes. Nintendo. A big win for them. But personally, I think some of the games are in the wrong categories. Yeah, you know, I felt the same way. You wanna switch one? Or two, two uh, switch two of them, yeah. Okay. Oh, I think what we're saying is, we really want the Nintendo Switch 2. We do want the Switch 2. Who's got the dev kit? <laughs> no? Where's John Vignocchi? Who's got the dev kit? <laughs> 
But speaking of Nintendo, Greg Way, the online fan base around the legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom was wild. People were out there building life-size mechs while I attached tires to a wooden board and called it a wheelie raft. Did it work really well? Get her a drink. Is there a shot? Can we get her oh, another come shot? Come on, that was adorable, whatever. Anyways, let's give it up to Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Yeah. Of yeah. course. It's the first Mario game to show us what Mario would literally be like on mushrooms. Of course, yes, yes, yes. Now, of course, in sadder news, Charles Martinet retired from his role voicing Super Mario. I don't want to miss that guy. He was like, it's a me. And I was like, let's a cry. Sorry. You know, because he did it for so long. I know. He that joke bombed bad, too. Sorry. Yeah, OK. We apologize on that one. No explanation <laughs> for it. Yeah, no, that's, that's it's right. Move on. Just go, just go, just go. All right, all right, all right. Looking forward, the trailer for Grand Theft Auto 6 was released last year, and it looks incredible. I am so excited for that. Yeah, also. Super excited because it's going to have the first female protagonist of this series. And I know you're celebrating this, but there won't be a PC version at launch. But as we all know, there are a lot of people online that say having the first female protagonist of that series automatically makes it a PC game. Oh God, that was, oh my God. You got it, right? <laughs> there are a bunch of overgrown children, right? Oh, a woman in a game, oh, you know what I mean? We know who you are and you suck. Yeah, we all know who you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But one more time, a massive congratulations to everyone here tonight. You are the best of the best. The Dice Awards are about you, the people behind the games. This is your moment. If you want to talk about the state of the industry when you're up here, talk about the state of the industry. If you want to get political, get political. Yeah, if you want to punch Greg in the face, please go for it. Yeah, you can say anything you want and we will support you. I mean, well, not everything. Yeah, we will turn on the music if you talk about Pal World. Sorry. Pal World jokes are for next year, all right? <laughs> There's a it's weird because it's this year. It doesn't matter. Uh, the point is, it's all of you who help our industry shine with thought-provoking creativity. That's why the best companies are the ones who ask questions. That's right. Nintendo says, what can we do to make every moment fun? Larian asks, what can we do to help players carve their own path? And Unity asks, what can we do to piss off as many people as possible? <laughs> Just get them angry. You know, yeah, they really did the best announcement to Apology speedrun. They sure did. Impressive. And they sponsored this show, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but we all know making games is hard, and I think we can all agree that there's no harder job in video games right now than being the social media manager for Suicide Squad. Yes. Shout out to them going through it at home right now. <laughs> okay, I see where we're at, all right? There are two phrases. Everyone in this room, everyone in video games never wants to hear. And number one is, people online are mad. And number two is, the Embracer group is here. <laughs> They've really fucked this place up, haven't they? It's yeah. fucking crazy. <laughs> With all that being said, let's hear it for the nominees tonight. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, Please, let's hear it for our scholars. Our scholars will be out all night giving out these awards. Of course, you will be out here. You will see Dutton. You will see Selena. They are our trophy presenters, so give them a round of applause as well, please. Yeah, they really are proof that our industry can grow and that new voices can be heard. That's why we honor them and everyone here tonight. Without you, the world would be less fun. Without you, the world would be way less interesting. And most importantly, without you, we wouldn't have jobs. But really, we appreciate you. We appreciate the work you and all the people in our industry do to put into our favorite old form. So have a great time. Good luck to all the nominees. And enjoy this opening from our friends at Noodle House.
Please welcome to the stage, Director of Development at Double Fine, Kevin Johnson. Action games are, at their core, the ultimate power fantasies. Escapism at its finest. The wonderful thing about power fantasies, though, is that the power part is so personal and varied. Maybe it's a high-flying swing through a cityscape wind against the skin-tight bodysuit of your choosing, or it's having a big gun and holding your breath, hoping that there isn't, but also is, another undead alien monster around the next corner. And maybe it's the opportunity to be killed by an unnaturally nimble giant deadly mech for the 67th time before you finally realize that it's okay, you are enough. <laughs> Playing these stories allows us to move to our own rhythms, uninterrupted, to become a version of ourselves untethered by the constraints of reality. The nominees for Action Game of the Year are... The nominees for Action Game of the Year are... Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. Dead Space. But we don't have much time. Fly. Hi-Fi Rush. I'm here, baby. Marvel's Spider-Man 2. You have no idea. This is really, really exciting. Remnant 2. And the winner is Marvel Spider-Man 2.
I won't lie, this is really freaking cool. Uh, first off, I want to thank the Academy and all this year's nominees. It's amazing games that we put out every single year, and just to be part of this industry is amazing. Obviously, we want to thank Marvel Games, working with this iconic character, this amazing franchise. The kid in me is, couldn't be more thrilled. Uh, I hope every developer one day gets to work with a group like PlayStation. The amount of support that we get across the board is incredible. To Herman, Grady, Ara, Joe, Connie, and of course, Mr. Mark Cerny, thank you so much for always supporting us and always putting the game's quality first. You know, Ryan, Jeanette, and I are up here, but really, the magic is really, and all the credit goes to our amazing team at Insomniac. Uh, yes, they... I've, I've been lucky enough to be part of this studio for 15 years, and probably like many people, it's become more of a family than uh, a job. And uh, I love you all. Thank you so much for making this possible. This is all to you guys, and thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Adventure is one of the biggest games in and one of the biggest genres in games. We enjoy taking part in the successes of characters like Link and Alan Wake, guiding them to the next big bad or the big reveal, excited when our hard hours on the sticks with them, we save the day. We have a good time. But, what, but are Link and Alan Wake having a good time? Alan Wake does not look like he's having a good time. <laughs> We've been sending Link out to slay monsters and ragged out, ragged out down mountains for decades now. And Dave the Diver, well, he looks like he's having a great time. I'm sure he's fine. Regardless of the mortal peril, adventure games offer us the most fantastical canvas on which to explore themes and ideas that are essential to our lives, and also torture Koroks. The nominees for Adventure Game of the Year are the nominees for Adventure Game of the Year are Alan Wake 2. <gasps> There's something I'm forgetting. Something important. Something's not right. Cocoon. Dave the Diver. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. In five years, hope may feel beyond our grasp. But I think we finally found somewhere the Empire can't reach us. A place that's worth fighting for, no matter the cost. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. And the winner is The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nate. I'm from Nintendo. I... <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, I'm... Very fortunate to work with all of our developers at Nintendo, um, and even more fortunate to be here today to accept this on their behalf. Um, if you're anything, anyone like me, uh, you are probably still on this adventure. Uh, no matter how much I play this game, I feel like there's still a new something to find over the next hill, in the next cave. 
uh, and I really think it's what makes it very, very special. Um, so to all of my fellow adventurers, please let me uh, thank you on behalf of the development team and thank you to the Academy for this great honor. Thanks. Please welcome to the stage, the studio head of Obsidian Entertainment, Fergus Urquhart. When you think about it, every game is technically a role-playing game. And I don't just say that because I've, been, I've spent more than 30 years making them. Role-playing games created the create the language we all speak. From character creation, to leveling up, to making choices in a story, video games and RPGs go hand in hand. And yet somehow, every year, role-playing games break new ground nobody expected. Seriously, I worked on the original Fallout and Baldur's Gate games, and every game announced tonight, <laughs> it's not about me. <laughs> Uh, still blew my mind. Uh, these games took us to places we've never seen and on journeys we'll never forget. The nominees for role-playing game of the year are Baldur's Gate 3. Together, we might survive. I'll enjoy watching you try. In mere moments, all that you have dreaded will come to pass. Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty. You know, V, treason ain't ever black and white. It's a charade, V. Wherever she goes, people get hurt. Bodies drop. Just want what Songbird promised me. The cure. Diablo 4. Final Fantasy 16. It's time to find out who we are. Once and for all. I am a shield of Rosaria, and I will do my duty. Come to me, Ifrit! Starfield. Human settlements throughout the galaxy could be at risk. And the winner is... Baldur's Gate 3. and your party, shaped by each and every decision. Um, well, thank you for the recognition, obviously. Um, the Academy, uh, most especially our players and community. Um, but of course, the team. Uh, the team at Larian Studios for over 20 years now has been building the technology and the knowledge and the philosophy to be able to build this type of game. And it's, it's really up to them right now um, to, to figure out how can we optimally use it. And we've created Baldur's Gate 3 with all of that knowledge uh, because we go one step further every single time and this isn't the last one. Thank you. Sports are something we're all familiar with, something we've all participated in, uh, even if when some of us were kids. Uh, it was, even, ah, even if when some of us were kids, it wasn't always by choice. Uh, if sports are a part of the very fabric of our cultures, and they are, then sports games allow, allow us to live a dream that everyone shares. If athletes represent the best of what we can do, these nominate, nominees represent the best of showing what those athletes can do. The nominees for Sports Game of the Year are EA Sports FC 24. Danger here as he runs at them. Oh. MLB The Show 23.
WWE 2K23. And the winner is Emma B. The Show, 23. Man, this is pretty sweet. Um, thank you to the Academy, everybody that voted for us. Uh, thank you to the fans for supporting us. Um, thank you to our families and significant others for putting up with us. You know, video game development is hard and y'all hold it down. Um, thank you to the leadership at PlayStation for allowing us to make this game and, you know, giving us those extensions when we need it, because sometimes we're late. <laughs> um, yeah, this is awesome. Thank you. Please welcome the communications director of Intersloth, Victoria Tran. It's no secret that online games are incredible accomplishments. The ability to create an experience where players are fully invested in cooperating or competing against people on the other side of the planet is no small feat. But something that gets lost in the shuffle is that online gaming also lets you connect with a long distance partner, a relative who moved away for college, or even help you make a new best friend. Online games go beyond fun. They connect us by take, making friends and strangers from every part of the world, near and far, and putting them in a room together. These are the nominees for Online Game of the Year. The nominees for Online Game of the Year are Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Diablo 4. Omega Strikers. Street Fighter 6. The Finals. And the winner is, this is harder than I thought, <laughs> Diablo 4. <Yeah. laughs> uh, this is a real honor, so thank you for this. So uh, I want to thank the Academy, obviously. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to thank all the hardworking teams that brought this online world together, a, a shared open world that we really invested in co-op. And so whether it's the people in Austin, the people in Albany, the people in Irvine, or all of our remote workers, thank you so much for all the hard work to make that world a reality that people can all come together and play. But most of all, I want to thank the community. Uh, you know, we listen to your feedback. You're an integral part of our, how we continue to grow the franchise and how we grow our game as we do season after season. So thank you for that. And of course, 
Today, we're very proud to announce that our community is growing as we're now available or will be available on Game Pass on March 28th. So there you go. But I'm just honored to share the stage with these people and honored to be part of Blizzard and part of the Diablo franchise. So thank you all very much. It's easy for some people to forget just how big mobile gaming is. Phones are a staple in so much of the world, and as they get more advanced, so are the kinds of game experiences being built for it. These games are always just a tap away, whether you're bored at work or need a few minutes to relax at home. Chances are some of you are looking at your phone right now while I'm talking, eyeing you down. <laughs> But not only is the barrier to entry a little easier, but mobile titles are often the first and only games a lot of people play, young or old. The best mobile games pull off the feat of being welcoming to curious new players while satisfying the most hardcore among us. Here are the nominees. The nominees for Mobile Game of the Year are Govins. Hello Kitty Island Adventure. <laughs> Honkai Star Rail. Terra Nil. What the car? And the winner is... What the car? I did not at all expect this, but uh, like most people, you, I wrote a few notes here, and like, what should I say? Um, first of all, I asked the team. They said, be really awkward. Um, that's gonna be awkward for you. It's not their problem, it's my problem. So I'm gonna do that. Um, then, um, I don't know, you say some things. Um, I looked at the list, and like, I found like one, one key insight in who's been winning so far. Every single game has their name spelled with all caps. So if your, name, your, your game name is spelled with all caps, it's very likely that you're gonna win. <laughs> Just saying it, cocoon uh, down there. Uh, yeah. Um, I think that's my best tip for making video games so far. Um, thank you to everyone who worked on the game. Uh, yeah, all of you. That's also a thing, right? Did it work? No awkwardness? And, and then I, I wrote, like, say thank you to all the other, like, partners things. So uh, I just want to say thank you to the, to the app, like, Kate people we pitched the game for, and we said, like, we want to make a car game, and they said, what? And we said, like, but it has legs, and they said, what? And then, like, it worked out.
Welcome to the stage, audio director at Atomic Arcade, Rob Crackle. Audio design can often, at times, feel like a thankless job. I mean, how often do people come up and say, the way the breeze wafted through the tree branches, chef's kiss, best part of the game. But the thing is, we all appreciate good audio, even when we're not noticing it. A howl in the forest, the crunch of snow underneath our hero's boot, laughter from a distant tavern, all add substance and reality to fantastical imaginary worlds. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Audio Design are. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Audio Design are Alan Wake 2. Wake has a double. Where is he now? I don't want to be in the story. Just write me out of the story. Cocoon. Hi-Fi Rush. Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Jedi Survivor. And the winner is Marvel's Spider Man Two. Thank you so very much. Thank you to the Academy, to all the other nominees. It is such an honor to be considered amongst your excellent work. Thank you to our incredible friends and partners at Sony PlayStation Sound and Music for your expertise, for your talents, your guidance. Thank you to Sweet Justice Sound for your amazing work on our cinematics. To the Insomniac Senior Leadership Team, thank you for making Insomniac such a fabulous place to work. <laughs> to the Project Leadership Team, to the VASE Team, I'm so thrilled to be working beside you every day. To everyone on the audio team that put everything into this game, thank you so much for sharing your talents and your skill. I'm so proud of your work. Thank you to Marvel for making this wonderful character that we've been able to bring to life. And thank you to our families, all the families in Insomniac that support us through this creative work, especially my sons, Chris and Anthony, that are here tonight. Thank you. The, <laughs> the power of music is undeniable. A feeling becomes a note, becomes a chord, becomes a song, and becomes a feeling once more. Game music becomes game memories. Super Mario Brothers. See? I'm sure I can guess the first thing that came to your mind. Enjoy having that theme in your head for the rest of the evening. <laughs> the nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Original Music Composition are 
The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Original Music Composition are Alan Wake 2. Diablo 4. Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Planet of Lana. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. as we fight. Hope survives. And the winner is... Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Wow, thank you everybody. Thank you so much, Dice. The other nominees, uh, Insomniac Games, so many people to thank. Ted Price, uh, Brian Inahar, Paul Mudra, Karen Reed, Jerry Berlon, Gary. I'm gonna run out of breath, my heart's racing. Uh, PlayStation music team, uh, Keith Leary, my co-producer, John Paisano, who wrote an incredible score, obviously. Uh, Rob Goodson. Uh, Anthony Caruso, all of our family and friends, uh, Chuck Dowd, head of music. Um, thank you guys so much. Have a great night. Welcome back your hosts, Stella Chung and Greg Miller. Spider-Man's coming all over the stage. God, I thought we talked about sorry, this. Sorry, sorry, okay, sorry. Okay, thank you. So, this year's Hall of Fame inductee is one of the greatest gaming musicians of all time. Nay, one of the greatest musicians of all time anywhere. Maybe you're familiar with his work, but let me give you a few bars if you're not. Do, 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 you good? Yeah, go for you it. Got it yeah, go for okay, it. Okay, thank Sorry. you. God, it's like I'm working with a toddler here. Mm -hmm. And here to present the Hall of Fame award to Koji Kondo is the legendary composer in his own right. He scored such block. <laughs> I thought we were done. He scored such blockbusters as the Super Mario Brothers movie, Crazy Rich Asians, The Fast and the Furious, and The Avengers: Age of Ultron. Please give it up for Brian Tyler. <laughs> Remember your first job, you probably learned a lot, but the work you produced maybe isn't the uh, first page of your professional portfolio, it wasn't mine. Unless of course you're Koji Kondo. And your first, yeah, <laughs> and your first job was sound engineering at a company called Nintendo. In that case, your first job was composing the iconic film theme music to the 1984 arcade game Punch-Out. And a year into the gig, you would go on to compose the bright, bouncy, unmistakable, playful theme to 1985's Super Mario Brothers, which you probably still have in your head from the last award presenter telling you about it. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun, you're wondering. 
Uh, Kanda-san has been making infectious and exuberant sounds since he first got his Yamaha electronic organ when he was five years old. But when he applied for a job with Nintendo in 1984, he probably couldn't have imagined the impact he'd eventually have making on generations of gamers. Nor could he have known that working for Nintendo would be the last job he'd ever need to apply for. The, the Legend of Zelda followed Super Mario Brothers in 1986 and cemented Kondi-san's status as one of the uh, earliest masters of the genre video game music. Atonal beeps and bloops were evolving into synthesized waveforms and eventually fully orchestrated scores. And many composers across a breadth of genres from film soundtracks to popular rock acts now count Kondi-san's work as uh, among their greatest inspirations, including myself. Part of what makes his work so compelling is that Kondo-san has always been much more than a musician. In fact, when he enrolled in um, Osaka University of Arts in 1980, in addition to music, he went on to study uh, writing, visual arts, uh, fine arts across the board. Even then, he was thinking beyond just um, musical notes. He saw music and visual information as intertwined and understood how these elements could be combined to express things in a totally different art form. Kondo-san's score for The Legend of Zelda brought something novel to the game music uh, genre, which was emotion. When you fired up The Legend of Zelda, as I remember, <laughs> from the very first note, the music generated by the NES's 8-bit Ryko microprocessor playing through your television speaker seemed uh, grand. It promised a hero's journey. Here was a game you wanted to invest in, to be drawn into, to walk away from inspired. Like the sword the protagonist receives at the beginning of the game, when he's warned that it's a dangerous time to go alone, Kondo-san's music was like a friend, a companion that came along with you on the journey. When I had the opportunity to work with Kondo-san on the score for the Super Mario Brothers movie, <laughs> thank you. Fantastic movie, available on all formats. It felt like something I've been preparing for my whole life. I knew this world and understood its characters because I was a fan first, all the way back to Donkey Kong. I'll never forget getting on a Zoom call with Kondo-san at the start of our collaboration and telling him all of this and how much I felt uh, I just was compelled to do this movie and how much of a fan I was. And uh, also just like his music, how has, uh, over the years has influenced me um, to be a better composer, to even be interested in music as a genre. I cut out articles about this man from gaming magazines, for real. And I had them on my wall, that was, that was me. <laughs> and I certainly didn't expect, uh, when I was talking to him on this Zoom call, for him to turn around and to prove it, he pulls out a bunch of CDs of my soundtracks off his bookshelf, and he indicates, look, like, no, I love your work. I have this from way back, the last 20 years of music. So it was a big moment for me. So from that moment on, I knew working with Kondo-san was gonna be fun and full of a lot of surprises, and it was. Not only is the Super Mario Brothers ground theme one of the handful of music pieces listed in the National Recording Registry of the Library of Congress, that's crazy. It, today, it is the only video game composition there. That's huge. Yeah. Kondo-san was also the first video game composer to be inducted into the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences Hall of Fame. <laughs> no doubt. All right. In the words of Mario, let's -a go. Music can be one of the most powerful elements of our favorite games. Many composers have made their mark in the gaming world, but when you think about video game composition, one name resonates through the decades, Koji Kondo. The man behind the scores, his melody breathes life into every game he touches. The goal is for the music to reflect the unique rhythms of the game, drawing us deeper into the world and the experience. For Koji Kondo, this philosophy has been a guiding force. Game 
場所や時代空気感などの物理的な面やキャラクターの心情などの心理面を表現することができますそれからゲーム音楽はゲームの進行の盛り上がりとかあとゲームの遊びの要素なども表現できますプレイヤーに向けては飽きのこないようにする没入感それから難しい場面での緊張感クリアした時の達成感爽快感を音楽は表現することができますそれからゲームを長く記憶に残すという点については音楽の力はとても大きいと思っています Born on August 13, 1961 in Nagoya, Japan, Koji Kondo's journey into the world of music began at the age of five. An early fascination for synthesizers became the spark that ignited his talents. Kondo's love for music grew with various genres, from alt rock to classical to jazz fusion. This, combined with his fondness for video games, shaped his musical perspective. During his time at Osaka University of Arts, the very first personal computer was released in Japan, and Kondo was captivated by how he could manipulate the computer to perform music using computer programming. Four years ago, I saw the cage of the cage of the cage, and in it, I saw the cage of 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 the cage. I was actually a student of the cage, 一つしか受けてなくて、それが任天堂でした。Immediately after graduating, Koji Kondo started at Nintendo in 1984. Kondo quickly rose within the company to become the third dedicated sound and music engineer at Nintendo. His first major contribution was to design the audio for the game Devil World for the Famicom. It was at this moment that Kondo's philosophy evolved from theoretical to practical. What happened next would transform gaming forever. Game music is a game experience that is more enjoyable and more powerful than it is. I think it's important to be careful for three things. One is ゲーム特有のリズムを捉えた曲にするということですそれから2つ目は全体的なバランスを考えてそれぞれの曲を作るということですそれから3つ目にはゲームというインタラクティブ性を生かしたリアルタイムに変化する音楽を作るということです After his initial success with Devil World Kondo was slated to work on a new game in the early stages of production Super Mario Brothers. The music in Super Mario Brothers went on to become Kondo's most recognized score. His meticulous work on the game's music, carefully synchronized with its vibrant, bouncing gameplay, not only transformed the industry's approach to music, but sound design as well. Working within the technological limitations of the time, Kondo crafted one of gaming's most hummable tunes with just three musical notes and a white noise channel. He worked to ensure it matched the physical sense of running and jumping, bolstering the unique rhythms within the game that made it part of an experience millions of players would never forget. Of course, Kondo's journey didn't end there. He next set out to create adventurous, often ethereal music for a new action adventure in which players could explore a massive game world that felt both mysterious and alive. That game, The Legend of Zelda, became one of the most beloved fantasy experiences of all time and continues to resonate with players decades later. From the intergalactic rhythms of Star Fox 64 to the gorgeous haunting melodies of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Koji Kondo's influence reaches across the industry. He has performed alongside renowned musicians and created timeless tunes and sounds now heard in games, movies, concert halls, and theme parks around the world. His commitment to creating soundscapes that complement the gameplay experience and determination to challenge the limits of technology have helped shape an era of joyful motifs and quotable sound cues that have left an indelible mark on gaming and entertainment history. Tonight, we honor Koji Kondo as the 2024 inductee to the AIAS Hall of Fame. Please welcome to the stage, Koji Kondo. Thank you for a lifetime of unforgettable melodies. Now it's, oh wait.
Oh, <laughs> and now it's uh, almost surreal getting to do this. My privilege and pleasure to welcome Koji Kondo for the legendary Dice Wars Hall of Fame. Congratulations, my man. Here you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for selecting me to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I'm very happy to be here. I have been working in the game for 40 years in the game. I've worked with a lot of games together with Nintendo staff. 何度も遊んでくださったゲームファンの皆様のおかげと心より感謝しております。I'm very honored to have been chosen for this prestigious award. This year marks my 40th anniversary in the gaming industry. Thank you. I'm incredibly grateful to the staff at Nintendo with whom I've worked on so many games. And also to the game fans who spent so much time playing these games. I have been in Mario series and Zelda series, but I have been in the game and 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 I have been in the game. So I have been mainly involved with the Metroid and Zelda series, or excuse me, Mario and Zelda series, but not with the mindset of merely adding game music or sound effects, but rather as a member of the game development team tasked with sound production, focused on working with the team to create fun games. So I have been involved with the Metroid and Zelda series, but not with the mindset of merely adding game music or sound effects, but rather as a member of the プレイヤーの状況に合わせたリアルタイムに変化するような音楽にしたりさまざまなアイデアを取り入れてそのゲーム体験がより魅力的になるように心がけてきました。To that end, we have always tried to incorporate a variety of ideas such as creating rhythms that make it fun to progress through games, melodies that are engaging every time players hear them, Music that changes in real time to match the player's situations, and pouring our hearts into making more engaging game experiences. これからも楽しいゲームを届けられるよう、音楽やサウンドデザイン、サウンド演出の面から新しいものに挑戦していきたいと思います。Going forward, I want to continue taking on new challenges in the areas of music, sound design, and sound production. With the goal of delivering fun games. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please welcome to the stage, writer and senior narrative designer at Cliffhanger Games, Alexa Ray Correa. I am so thrilled to be presenting these next two awards honoring my peers in storytelling. <laughs> Stories, thank you. Stories are as old as humanity. Storytelling was one of the first job classes humans ever selected for themselves. And over the eons, we've leveled up from campfires to 4K in the ways that we tell them. Games allow us to be in constant dialogue with our stories and be a physical part of the journey. Only in this medium do we get the opportunity to truly test the boundaries of what is possible with storytelling. And here are the nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Story. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Story are Alan Wake 2. Go. 
Taylor would have left a message. It's for us. The text is about us. We were all trapped in a horror story. The horror story wanted us dead. Baldur's Gate 3. The future of Baldur's Gate hangs in the balance. Will you be the hero and save it from looming darkness? Or will the city crumble? Dave the Diver. Thirsty Suitors. I wanted you to run away with me again, because going back to the past is safer than facing the future. I've been running in circles a long time, trying to pretend this game will last forever. Venva. And the winner is Baldur's Gate 3. And I'm here to save you again. The absolute. Thanks again for, um, <laughs> for recognizing that we made a, a really good story. Um, by we, I of course mean the entire team. It's, uh, it's the narrative designers, it's the writers, but it doesn't stop there. You also need people that you know, make it work. You need the scripters, then you need all the cinematics team. Like everyone, again, in Larian Studios plays a part in making sure that even how kick-ass the story is, that it really works well. Um, I remember the first time we met with Wizards of the Coast, uh, I think only one day before uh, Sven Vinke, our creative director, had his finger in the monster manual on the Mind Flayers and was like, this is going to be the big bad guy. And I thought like, wow, okay, that's, you know, he's really big and bad. But in an RPG, you really need to be able to go from a zero to a hero, so the big bad guy needs to be almost impossible to beat so that you can create that entire journey. Um, so yeah, go big or go home. Thanks again. Characters and games are the culmination of many, many talented people working together to bring a being to life. They are the perfect collision of artistic and technical achievement, and over the dozens, sometimes hundreds of hours we spend alongside them, they become so much more than what is on screen. They are our mascots and our icons, our heroes and our villains. They're our friends when we need a hand to hold, and they are our Tumblr obsessions when we need to, um... Come on, we were all thirsty little freaks last year. You know what I'm talking about. Use your imagination. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Character are... The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Character are Alan Wake 2, Saga Anderson. Did you put my family in the horror story? It's, it's not true. It's just a fucking story. It's not true. I can stop this nightmare. Baldur's Gate 3, Astarian. <laughs> what fun! I'm going to fucking kill you. What in the sweet hells were you thinking? Activating that lot? I was right there! If there is a next time, I'll be the one aiming the all-powerful weapon. Baldur's Gate 3, Carla. I love you too! <laughs> oh my god! I've been dying to say that. Oh my god, if I smile any bigger, my face is going to crack. 
Marvel's Spider-Man 2, Miles Morales. And what about MJ? You could have killed her! I know you're hurting, Pete, but you're better than this! I know, I know, but... Thirsty Suitors, Jala. Is it weird that I find your daddy issues kind of hot? That is hot. That's not what I, ugh, forget it. And the winner is, Miles Morales. <laughs> Well, if this is my last chance to say anything to you, I won't forgive you. It's just not in me. Wow. 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 First, I want to thank God, first and foremost, and I want to thank my team. It takes a village, a village to, you know, bring the journey that we have brought with Spider-Man and Miles and my Sony team, my Marvel team, and my Insomniac. I don't think we're going to sleep tonight. <laughs> no pun intended. But uh, yeah, I just want to thank everyone at the Academy. And this has been an incredible journey. Uh, Y'all stay tuned and uh, get ready because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bobby, Brian, James, Ham. Everybody over here, like, you guys don't understand the journey that we've taken. And I love you, everyone here. Thank you for the nominees. Everybody at the nominees, like, it's crazy. Thank you guys, love you. Welcome back to the stage, Greg Miller and Stella Chung. Strategy and simulation games and fighting games may seem totally unrelated, but for me, there's a pretty strong connection. Number one, in a fight, my strategy is not to get hit in the face. It's the money maker, Stella. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, oh, nothing. Sorry. I do a lot of podcasts. Number two, if I'm in a fight, I'm praying it's a simulation. So you pray a lot, huh, when I come around? <laughs> I do pray a lot, Stella. All right, awesome. <laughs> Unfortunately for the rest of us, those are two different categories, Greg. Sure, sure. Which is a shame because seeing you do that would make my night. So, with that in mind, let's see the nominees for Strategy and Simulation Game of the Year. The nominees for Strategy slash Simulation Game of the Year are Against the Storm. Core. Dune Spice Wars. Last spell. War Tales. Dune Spice Wars. Yeah. 
Shiro Games couldn't be here tonight, but they have a message they'd like to share. Hello and thank you very much. Uh, we are very proud and very happy to receive this award. This is a great pleasure. Uh, we feel a bit lucky because we had two games nominated in this section. So I guess we had more chance than others, <laughs> but uh, I think the game was very good and we very happy with the whole team behind Shiro Games uh, to have created these two games, but this one in particular. And uh, this is, a, of course, uh, thanks to the whole team at Shiro uh, in Bordeaux in France. Uh, we uh, all work uh, very well on this game for long years and uh, we really enjoy uh, seeing the feedback on the game, the community playing, the players spending hundreds of hours on the game. And uh, we look forward for more players and uh, more people discovering the game thanks to the Dice Awards. Thank you very much. Greg, can I just say, it has been an absolute pleasure hearing, hearing from everyone today, hearing how passionate everyone is and the respect that we have for each other. It is just incredible. Can we get another round of applause for everyone here? Well said, Stella. Thank you. I was it's expecting amazing. a joke at my expense, but I appreciate it. Oh, that's coming. Don't worry. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I got some fighting words for you. Oh, do you now? Yeah, okay. yeah. We'll, we'll tackle that off stage. All right. So. Now, for fighting game of the year. Whether you're playing one for the first time or you spent your childhood putting quarters on an arcade cabinet, fighting games are some of the most accessible and yet deceptively deep games there are. I still believe that the most important moment of my life was the first time I launched a fireball from my hands. Wait, not your wedding or the birth of your child? Jen, I'm sorry. I shoulda, shoulda thought that one through. All right, you know what, uh, let, me, let me cover for you. <clears throat> the nominees for Fighting Game of the Year are... The nominees for Fighting Game of the Year are... Grand Blue Fantasy Versus Rising. Mortal Kombat 1. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2. Pocket Bravery. You got this. Street Fighter Six. And the winner is Street Fighter VI. Unfortunately, Capcom couldn't be here with us tonight, so I'll be accepting this award on their behalf. This is huge for me. I've never won an award for a game I didn't work on. Um, I want to thank the Academy, of course, my family. Uh, but I'd also like to start some shit. So I'd like to go after Ed Boon, who said to me, quote, Greg, you've never made a video game before. There's no way you'll beat me in Mortal Kombat 1. Well, who's laughing no, now? Okay, all right, okay. all right, I, okay, all right. God, you're, you are cut off. Sorry. My sorry, goodness. Sorry. <sighs> all right. Our next presenter is the head of Sony Interactive Entertainment's Indies Initiative. Please welcome Shuhei Yoshida. <laughs>
it's nearly impossible to overstate the significance of good game design. Game design is at the core of how our industry evolves, how we innovate. And for gamers, evolution and innovation equal to one thing, fun. This year's nominees for outstanding achievement in game design opened up new avenues of fun. Those nominees are the nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Game Design are Baldur's Gate 3. You're a pawn, a slave to forces you cannot comprehend. Cocoon. Dave the Diver. Super Mario Brothers Wonder. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. And the winner is Borders Gate 3. Again, thank you for the recognition for game design stuff. Um, I would like to say we didn't do that much different, but actually we did. Like to me, Baldur's Gate 3 still builds on top of a highly interactable world, lots of synergy, uh, lots of reactivity, et cetera, et cetera. But what we did have to do is apply Dungeons and Dragon rules to it, which was a challenge. So this award goes to the design team for actually succeeding in that because what works in a book on paper and tabletop in the theater of your mind doesn't really work in a computer game necessarily. So this one's for them, for making it work, for making combat fun, for leveling up, uh, for explaining this to everyone who's never actually played a Dungeons and Dragons game. Design team, hurrah. Independent games are the cornerstone of our industry. <laughs> Indie games take big risks and make bold, <laughs> bold choices that often become the standard years down the line. Indie games got there first. While it's never easy to make a video game on any scale, the indie developers behind the games nominated tonight used limited resources to make truly thrilling experiences unlike anything we've seen before. They aren't just great artists. They are also the future of our industry. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement for an Independent Game are 
The nominees for Outstanding Achievement for an Independent Game are Cocoon. Dredge. El Paso Elsewhere. Thirsty Suitors. I'm not afraid I'll ever be ordinary. Venva. And the award goes to Cocoon. <laughs> okay, this is kind of a big deal. Um, yeah, Cocoon had quite humble beginnings when I first joined the team. Uh, Yebe and Jakob. They asked me, like, hey, like, would you like to uh, move to Copenhagen for one year? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll work on a little game. Uh, move to Sweden. It turns out Copenhagen is not in Sweden, it's actually in Denmark. I had no idea what I was getting into. <laughs> I, I learned a few things along the road. And uh, yeah, but that conversation was seven years ago, almost. So it also took a little bit longer. But uh, yeah, it was a, an amazing journey. And uh, I think we have a few people to thank for that. Along the way. Yes. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, I would like to thank all our dear colleagues at Geometric. Uh, wish you were all here. You should be here. Um, and we would all like to thank the Academy and everyone who voted for us. It's really heartwarming. And uh, Annapurna Interactive for believing in us. Thank you so much. We would like to thank 24-bit uh, games for making uh, cool ports for the PlayStation and Nintendo. And, um, and uh, the Danish Film Institute for supporting us. Uh, it was a big help early on, so thank you for that. Thank you. Welcome to the stage, the CEO of Brass Lion Entertainment, Bryna Dabby Smith. Usually the first thing that comes to mind with animation is the big stuff. The boss battles, the chase scenes, the explosions, the finish him. However, there's also the way a character walks with a confident gait. The way an emotion subtly spreads across a character's face. Great animation informs us about the world we're playing in and deepens our connection to the gaming experience. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Animation are... The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Animation are... Final Fantasy 16. Hi Fi Rush. So 
you know, they're insane. Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Mortal Kombat 1. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Marvel Spider-Man 2. Hello, hello. Thank you, Dice, and to the fellow Nanamese uh, for this award. Um, Man, this is nervous. I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> You're thrilled to accept this award. I am thrilled to accept this award on behalf of our amazing animation team as well as the entire studio. It, it really does take the entire studio to, uh, to make our experiences. Um, thank you for the spectacular performances and stunts from our actors, those along with our you know, hand keyed animation, cinematography, and editing um, come together uh, with our animation team and uh, I'm as quickly as possible gonna mention them. <laughs> so uh, it's Rigging led by Alan Weeder, uh, Living World led by Paul Robbins and Cody Cisneros, Combat led by Kevin Groh, Traversal led by Elliot Grossman, Missions led by Stephanie, Stephanie Aharonian, and this guy, James Hamm. All right, and, and uh, Bosses led by Stephen Carmadella, Cinematics led by Lindsay Thompson and Bradley McLaughlin, Cine and Game Anim Direction by Danny Garnett and Bobby Coddington. That's me. <laughs> Um, production managers, Burt Grave, Carla Schwamm, senior manager, David Hancock, and department head, Albert Kinsey. Thanks to our partners, PSVA, Liquid Development, and Original Force. We'll take that off your hands. We absolutely love making these games at Insomniac. We love it. Um, and thank you to uh, the ultimate SIE and Marvel Games. Thank you so much. Um, thank you to the fans. Thank you to our family members. Um, we need you so much, and, and thank you so much for everything you do for us. Uh, we love you all. Thank you. Bye. Art Direction is creating living, breathing worlds. Gamers themselves, in turn, get to feel like they're living and breathing in those worlds. Whether it's a far-off galaxy, a school of magic, or the familiar landscape of New York City, Thanks to Art Direction, they're all real to us. The nominees are. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Art Direction are Alan Wake 2. Hey Anderson, it's right up your alley. Hogwarts Legacy. <laughs> Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. <laughs> S 
Starfield. Alan Wake 2. Are you talking about the murder site? Yeah. Thank you so much. Accepting this on behalf of our art director, Janne Pulkinen, who is a wonderful collaborative genius, and his whole art team, we really wanted to bring unique look for the game through our Northlight engine as well. We were looking for inspiration in art house cinema, in art photography, uh, for our live action. We were kind of crazy and wanted to do practical effects. You know, if you have played the game and seen the vortex between the worlds, that's actually a slow motion camera pointed to a blender with colored liquid. Uh, and, and in the dark place in our New York, all the graffiti under the guidance of our lead environment artist, Nazareno Urbano, all of that is done by graffiti artist uh, on actual walls and, and photographed into the game. Uh, for a horror game, obviously, uh, lighting VFX crucially important. This means a lot. Uh, Janne definitely deserves this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Distinguished guests, please welcome content creator and host of Gamertag Radio, Paris Lilly. <laughs> Immersive reality in and out of itself is a technical achievement that our parents and admittedly even some of us has considered a sci-fi dream. Some of you might remember the early 90s when there were literally horror movies about people getting sucked into a computer by putting on a headset. But today, in 2024, not only does that immersive reality exist, it's at the forefront of advancement. The nominees are. The nominees for immersive reality technical achievement are Asgard's Wrath 2. Assassin's Creed Nexus VR. <laughs> Horizon Call of the Mountain. Go to We are one. And the winner is...
Horizon Call of the Mountain. Thank you all, this is amazing. It's truly an honor to be awarded among all these nominees. Uh, at Gorilla, we love making games, but it was also really hard to do this because we re really wanted to give, uh, sorry, to make the Horizon world come to life in, for example, eh, twisting, making a twist in your hand and taking in a view from the mountain. So we really want to thank so many people. Yeah, so this was a collaboration between Gorilla and Fire Sprite, and we want to thank everyone at both studios. But we want to give special thanks to Jan Bart van Beek, Tom Vernon, Pantelis Lakakis, Stu Tilly, all of our colleagues at SIE and PlayStation, and of course, Herman Holst. Thank you so much for this great honor. Thank you. Super. The power of immersive reality games nominated tonight is right there in the name, immersive. And it's not just because of the headset. These are the games that don't just show your world, they make you feel like you're a part of it. You don't hold a controller, you are the controller. You are the vampire. You are exploring the sci-fi future of Horizon, but it is you there and not a character on the screen. That's the magic of immersive reality games, and the nominees are. The nominees for Immersive Reality Game of the Year are Asgard's Wrath 2. Here to right your wrongs. Yeah. Assassin's Creed Nexus VR. Traitor to the crown. Hang by the neck until dead. For his crime, the penalty is death. Horizon, Call of the Mountain. Vampire, the Masquerade, Justice. This is not even your city. Vertigo 2. Asgard's Wrath 2. Holy cow, this is badass. <laughs> um, geez, where do I start? Um, four years ago, oh, the, uh, this, I'm gonna be a little emotional here. I'm a new, right? This is cool. Um, four years ago, the studio uh, accepted this challenge of doing a very complicated thing, basically taking and fully realizing an RPG on a standalone VR headset, right? So um, that, was, that was a really tough challenge and an impossible task. And Senzaro doesn't walk away from challenges and the team knocked it out of the park. I mean, they did a phenomenal job. I also wanna... <laughs> <laughs> I also want to thank everyone who helped us get here, and I want to send out a special thank you to Jason Rubin, Mike Verdu, Geo Hunt, and also Mike Doran, because those guys really, I mean, they, they put a lot of faith and confidence in a studio, and uh, they really helped us, like, do something special. Thank you. Matt, you want to say anything?
Yeah. I just want to say, um, you know, when we, when we first wanted to make Asgard's Wrath 2 on a standalone platform, people thought we were crazy. I mean, the amount of content, the wide open spaces in there were nuts. But we had the support from Oculus and Meta, and they got us where we are. I just want to say to everyone in this room, when you get those times when you're like, this is crazy, do not do this, you keep pushing. This is how we make this medium. And VR is not going away. This is going to blow up all over the place. Thank you guys so much. Go Cesaru! Please welcome to the stage Netflix's vice president and head of external games, Leanne Loom. <laughs> Family and gaming have a lot in common. Sometimes it's about teamwork, sometimes it's all about winning and being super competitive, and sometimes you just want everyone to have a great time. Family games are fun for all ages and all skill levels, not to mention a great way to decide who's gonna do the dishes for the next month. So the nominees for Family Game of the Year are... The nominees for Family Game of the Year are... Disney Illusion Island, Hello Kitty Island Adventure. Midnight Girl. Super Mario Brothers Wonder. And the winner is Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Thank you, thank you, and uh, you're right, um, Family Game Night can definitely get contentious, but we're always really happy when Nintendo games get on the menu. Um, regardless of whether or not you're playing uh, competitively or cooperatively, um, I think we're just really happy that this game was able to connect with not only parents who grew up with the original series, but also the younger generation who are just getting introduced to it for the first time. So on behalf of the development team, thank you very much. So for anyone that knows me will know that I am super excited to present this award because I fucking love cars and uh, there is nothing like a good racing game. The twist, the turns, the drifting, that like pit in your stomach when your car flips off the track and explodes and it's all from the safety of your gaming chair, which ironically probably looks a little bit like it came from my race car. So, the Racing Game of the Year nominees are... The nominees for Racing Game of the Year are... F-099. <laughs> 
Forza Motorsport. Hot Wheels Unleashed 2, Turbocharged. Lego 2K Drive. And the winner is Forza Motorsport. I know you're ready. You've got this. I feel like we need to be fast getting up here. <laughs> so it was about 27 years ago that I pulled into my first job out of college and I was pulling up in my 1991 Ford Probe, my first sports car, I was so excited. Manual transmission, everything was manual. Anyway, I was testing Need for Speed 2. To be here 27 years later accepting this on behalf of the incredible team at Turn Sense Studios, our global studios that are helping us make this possible is just the honor of a lifetime. So thank you so much. And thank you most of all to our players, our community who take their time, who give us their passions, who give us their feedback, we're listening. Let's make this the best motorsport journey ever. Thanks so much. Mike? <laughs> I just want to thank all our partners, so many to count, um, all of the Xbox team uh, for all your support, our friends at Playground Games for we could not do this without you, all our families uh, for supporting us as we put our blood, sweat, and tears into this game, and most importantly, the team at Turn 10. I feel incredibly lucky to spend my days working with such an incredibly talented team. Thank you. Thank you. You know him from Deus Ex and Dishonored. Please welcome studio director of Arcane Austin, Harvey Smith. Hey everybody, it's such an honor to be here. It's incredibly hard to make good games and it's such an honor to be able to, uh, you know, announce the uh, winners here tonight for these categories. As we know, video games started as fun, simple arcade simulations. With each new game, development teams realized they could do a little bit more with the technology, and a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more, advancing beyond what we all thought was possible. Now, decades later, we're playing games where we can swing through a lifelike New York or use magical glue to create working machines. These technologies have changed our lives so much. The nominees for Outstanding Technical Achievement are... The nominees for Outstanding Technical Achievement are... Alan Wake 2. I'm trapped here. Every word is a step forward. There are things that go wrong in the night. It's all true. It's all true. Hogwarts Legacy. <laughs> Marvel's Spider Man Two. The finals. No doubt about it, Scotty. We've got strategies in play. Oh. 
The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Just remarkable stuff. Everybody should be so proud. And the winner is... Marvel Spider-Man 2. Are you hearing this, Harry? How much longer? I know, I know. I'm on the line. Good. Uh, thank you to the Academy. Uh, man, everyone here, you clean up really nice. It's great to see everybody. Um, <laughs> There are so many talented programmers and technical artists at Insomniac Games uh, that are dedicated. They work so hard, they work together. I wish they could all be here tonight uh, to celebrate this with us. Um, you, of course, don't get a technology award without an amazing game to show it off, an amazing studio environment to work in. So thank you to everyone at Insomniac Games. Please give all yourselves a pat on the back tonight. Um, Thank you to our partners at PlayStation, our partners at Marvel Games, our partners at home who support us so much in doing what we do. And really, uh, thank you to everyone in the industry, especially, of course, in the engineering disciplines for me who, who share uh, what you do, how you do it, um, who work together so well and turn how did they do that into we can do that too uh, so that the next games we make can be even better. So thank you very much. All right, uh, great game direction guides the work of many talents into a singular and cohesive vision. All those game mechanics, environments, UI elements, music, and voices, tie them together and the game becomes greater than the sum of its parts. This year's nominees for outstanding achievement in game direction made sure everything came together in harmony. They are... The nominees for outstanding achievement in game direction are... Baldur's Gate 3. Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Super Mario Brothers Wonder. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Let's go! Link. Well done, everyone. And the winner is... Baldur's Gate 3. I know it doesn't show, but I am actually nervous. Um, I, I didn't expect this one. The nominees for this category are really strong. Um, I wouldn't have given it to Baldur's Gate 3. Um, 
I always dedicate all of these awards to the team because without a team, you don't do anything. There's, there's never one person that is responsible for a thing. It's always everyone. But there is, in, when we're talking about game direction, there is one person that is responsible for getting the best out of us, for sharing a vision with us, uh, and, and trying to get us to actually understand that one and, um, and help him achieve what he wants, what, what he sees, and that's Sven Vinke. And um, so this one, I will dedicate not only to the team, but especially to him because he really deserves this. Also, please know that I don't suck up to my boss and he knows this. <laughs> I, I pick fights with him almost every week. Uh, just last year and the year before, I was fighting him over certain decisions that he was taking, where I thought, like, this doesn't fit Larian, this doesn't fit the game, and he always saw through North, and I didn't. So I was wrong, sometimes I'm wrong. Um, because he had a vision where, in his mind, he sees what the game looks like when it's finished. And a lot of people only do that when everything finally comes together and you can play it. Um, so this one is for Sven. Cheers. Welcome back, your hosts, Stella Chung and Greg Miller. Great job. Come on, keep it going, everybody. I have good news. We've made it to the end of the evening. And we made pretty good time, if I do say so myself, huh? Yeah, I think we beat our own record from going from show open to open bar. That's right. Our final presenter of the night is studio director at Supergiant Games. Please welcome Amir Rao. Thank you. Here we are, game of the year. The last award of the evening, an evening celebrating and revisiting great creative and technical achievements. Whether you were nominated or not, the very fact that you're here with us tonight means you won. So now, let's take a look at some of the very best gaming experiences of the last year made by some of the most incredible teams our industry has to offer. The nominees for Game of the Year are... The nominees for Game of the Year are... Alan Wake 2. First things first, what's your name? Someone knew they were here, was playing a game with them. I'll play alone for now. I write to escape. You must stop it before it turns real. Baldur's Gate 3. Parasites are merely a symptom of a greater sickness in Faerun. The infected hear the voice of the Absolute and believe it to be a god. Bow before me. Bow before the Absolute. Bow! Cocoon. Marvel's Spider-Man 2. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom.
The game of the year is Baldur's Gate 3. He's back. Uh, this is existential to us, as you can tell from all the emotion on David's face. Uh, we're very lucky. We've had a lot of stage time. Uh, others are not so lucky. This is a really human industry, and we're really bad sometimes at showing that, showing developers what they're worth and showing the players at home that we care about them. It's kind of the elephant in the room, especially surrounded by all this opulence, which, you know, can only go so far. Without people, we would not be standing here. Without the people that work in these games, we would not be standing here. Many, many people will let go uh, at the start of this year. I want you all to know that you are talented and that you matter and that you are the future of this industry. <laughs> Don't let that flame be extinguished by our collective mistakes. I know that everyone here is scared because shit's really fucked up. All of your projections are wrong, and it's scary. But we persevere as an industry, we will persevere as an industry, and you will all find your place, and you will all be welcomed back with open arms, and we'll still be making games for the players, and for you, and uh, with these guys. So. To, to add to that, uh, a lot of people probably want to know what's the secret to your success. Um, last year I started thinking the secret to our success is the decisions that we make come from what does the player want, what do I think is best for the game, what is the most fun, what is the most crazy. People telling us we shouldn't do this, uh, or we can't do it, or this is too challenging or too hard, like it was already said here today that usually just gives us a kick up the arse to actually make it happen. Um, the stuff that we make at Larian is we ask you to pay one price only for the game and that's it, you can own it for the rest of your life. We, we don't have shareholders, but we also don't think about them. And we, we think there's, there's an expression in Dutch that uh, honesty lasts longest or something. I, there's, there's probably a version in English as well that makes a lot of sense. But what we have tried in the last 20 years is to treat people like we would like to be treated ourselves as players, as gamers. So we don't make decisions where we, take, where we think this could make us the most money. On the long run, building a community, building a player base, building games that are actually fun is going to make you the most money. That's it. Thank you. That's our show, everybody! Yeah, thank you to the members of the Academy, the judges, and the voters. And thank you to everyone watching here, of course, and online. We wouldn't get to do any of this without you. So congratulations to Baldur's Gate one more time. Woo! Yes. And good night, everybody. Good night! <laughs>